This is Spiritual Reality Plainly Seen, the podcast that takes a look at spirituality in our lives and the world around us. Here's your host, Dr. Frank Kaufman. Good morning. I'm doing a piece this morning I've entitled Building Memories. Uh, Once again, I'm coming straight off this young teacher I always talk about. And once again, it's the same story, kind of a casual assumptions and simple observations on his part kind of rock my world. They fascinate me and uh, just wanted to speak about those today because, again, I think they're enormously helpful for anybody who's trying to become a better person and trying to do some good in the world. So when he, uh, he's, he's talking to his little crowd of people, people who come regularly, weekly or something like that, to hear him, and he introduces his topic, I think, which the name of it on that day was called Memories. And uh, so he starts out with, let me ask you a question. Do you have more good memories or do you have more bad memories when you look back on your life? First person yells out, more good memories. He answers, okay, good. I guess it's up to you, right? No sooner as he finished that than some little kid, like some little like seven-year-old kid hollers out, more bad, me- <laughs> more bad memories. Anyway, the whole room falls apart. He kind of stops in his tracks and is hoping, probably trying to keep talking. Here's this little kid, seven-year-old kid saying he has more bad memories. He looks straight down at the kid and says, you're just a kid, man. (laughs) He goes, you haven't even lived yet. And then he says, okay, at least you've got an opinion and you're honest. So it was a fun moment anyway. But on to the more important stuff that I wanted to the reason why I'm making this podcast today is he goes on to kind of think aloud about memories, about the fact that human beings have memories or hold memories. And he goes on to say, I guess that memories are the building blocks of the thing we call intelligence. If you look at the animal kingdom, memory is a survival mechanism. It is very important. Animals have a greater acute sense than we do because they have to survive based on that. Memory is very important. Right from birth, they have to learn how to survive, to catch prey, to find food sources, and to navigate from point A to point B. It all depends on memory, and their life depends on it. Now, that alone was fascinating to me and and evocative kind of sent me in some kind of trance little meditation realizing that I never thought of that I never thought that an animal is the amassing of memories and their skills or their survival is actually the constant unfolding of memories as they collect in their little animal experience. It's kind of like gamers. I don't know anything about gaming, honestly, but every so often I'll stand behind some genius who's kind of killing off karate attackers or whatever, or whatever, you know, or shooting, shooting up towns full of people exploding into blood splatter. But basically, and then, and then sooner or later, you know, The person gets overwhelmed and there's some sad noise and the game crumbles down. And the gamers I watch or the kids I watch in the arcades or whatever, they instantly, instantly start back up from zero. They may be on level 12 or, you know, you can tell I don't know what I'm talking about. And they just fly through, they just fly through to the point where they got wiped out, where they got killed or decimated or somehow uh, crumbled down. So it, took, it may have taken them a day, days, a week, months, I don't know, to be able to get all the way up to the point where they get destroyed. And so the second that they get destroyed, they go back to the start and they fly through that. In other words, they're kind of, uh, this isn't against gamers, by any, uh, but they're kind of like becoming like 
animals and they're surviving and they're remembering every last assault. Uh, if I if I ever picked up uh, what are, I forget what those are called those those things that you know that you manipulate. If I ever picked up, I, I'd be killed the first second all the time. I'd just be killed before the game even starts. I'd be killed. But these people they go through thousands or tens of thousands of some of the most re- refined and most nuanced movements in order to protect their survival but all it is 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 just the perfect execution of execution of memory at high speeds and then uh, they also remember the exact means or manner by which they got destroyed and they get through that and then they can progress a little further down to the next level or whatever it is um, same with chess i just played a lot of chess and i play with people I, I don't enjoy the feeling of, of intense competitiveness. So, you know, I play. I was good enough, but, you know, I didn't kind of memorize libraries full of uh, whole games that have names and things like that. And so I play along just as clever as I could be without, mem- without that next level of chess playing. And then as soon as somebody won or lost, instantly my opponent would would set up the whole game again exactly where the tables turned and want to start playing again, want to relive that and want to see what moves, et cetera, et cetera. And for me, it was like, hey, you know, game's over. That was fun. We got to, or, you know, I got to hang or something. I, I didn't want to kind of go relive everything, but but those chess players I played with, they want to, they want to go see... Go revisit exact moments, exact moments in the unfolding. So it's probably exactly like video games. It's just it's just a kind of medieval slow motion version of these kids that fly through like maybe a thousand chess games every 30 minutes or something like that. But so all this is a, a little bit of a tangent, but it's not really. So he's talking about that how animals survive based on memories. And this opens up a whole world to me because we ourselves, we're not, we're not merely trying to survive. We're trying to be something good. We're trying to do something good. We're trying to, but we are trying to, like a gamer or like an animal or like a chess player, we're trying to get to the next level. We're trying to get past the point where we got destroyed last time. And that's what's so deep. And that's what's so interesting. And again, this this friend of mine, just a casual observation. He just speaks for animals for a couple of moments in, in the deepest possible way. And then he goes, so that so there it is, you know. They have to survive to catch prey, find food sources, navigate from A to B. And that all depends on memory. And their life depends on it. That's so cool. For And then he goes, for us too. Memory is very important because that's pretty much how we build our lives. If you don't have many good memories, I guess you have to build them to find them somehow. All right. Now that that next little patch of uh, verbiage would say, oh, you know, you need to be more of an optimist or look back on your childhood and try to find what was good about it. You know, even if your father beat you, but didn't you get to go to the park some days and play on the swings? Wasn't that fun sometimes? Or yes, that's that's true. It's kind of a it's kind of a willful positivity or optimism or don't be you know don't only focus on the bad yeah yeah that's true but as i read on or uh, as he spoke on it wasn't this kind of pain or plain or patent kind of oh find the good find the good in everything kind of uh yeah thanks that's good advice how the hell do you do that thank you very much so it wasn't that kind of he says i guess we have to build them somehow find them somehow. But as I read on, he's not merely talking about this kind of call to optimism, which every kind soul always tries to do to help me or us. He goes, so there are some things we can rely on to help us achieve that end. Okay, good. He's going to talk about some practical ways to do this. He goes, yes, according to the, according to the promise, we have the greatest capacity of store, storing memory. So human beings have the the single greatest and most superior 
memory storage capacity of any living creature. And plus, it's a capacity just beyond just the building blocks of intelligence. So if you talk about an animal's intelligence or capacity to survive or way to be stealth at night or way to protect oneself against the, the greater forces of animals that are stronger or quicker or something. It isn't just the building blocks of intelligence, he says. And I'm reading. Yeah, there are all sorts of diverse applications of the intellectual capacities that we have to do things that we want to do beyond what you see in the animal kingdom. So how would you create a good memory if you don't have so many? That's the whole question. And that's what I was leery about. I didn't want to have some optimist telling me, don't be so glum, find the positive side of things. And, and then he jumps across. And again, I'm just kind of overly praising this guy as I always do. He goes, that's why imagination is very important and creativity is very important. And I'm saying, hmm, hmm. Uh, imagination and creativity, I thought we were talking about memories, and but here it goes. Because everything that you want to do after you've reached a certain stage where you have the basic building block of creating your greater self, because you have learned, you have memorized, so to speak, or how to speak, you know how to speak, you know how to read, you know how to write, you know how to do the basic things, what we need is a plan. We need a plan. How do we plan our future? He's going on to say, it sounds like a it sounds like a break from the memory thing. He goes, you have to envision yourself 10 years from now. Let's say you're a 12 year old kid or barely a teenager, middle school, whatever. You have to envision yourself 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Even if it ha if it hasn't happened yet, you don't have it in your memory. But you can store mental images that you are creating about yourself. So here's the link. Here's the link. He's talking about, it's not just fantasy. It is imagination. It is creativity. It isn't recollecting data or, or factual experience that becomes a memory. But it's stored. It, it uses the faculty of memory in order to store information, which then contributes, as memories do, to our emp self-empowerment. So he goes, so he's talking about, first he said, you know, a 12-year-old kid, you have to think about what you might be 20 years from now, think about what you might be uh, 10 or 20 years from now. If he, he says, it hasn't happened yet, you don't have it in your memory, but you can store those mental images that you're creating about yourself. It might not be true at the moment in physical form because it hasn't been manifested yet. However, that image that you see for yourself, perhaps one day, if you do the right thing, if you're persistent and you do what it takes to get there and keep at it, perhaps the image of what you have stored in your head when you are a sixth grader 10 years from now or 20 years from now or 30 years from now will come true. So here's the, the thing that I thought was so extremely cool and extremely helpful in these, and once again, these kind of mundane, casual, just observations about the nature of things, just kind of staring at a cat walking around. And suddenly I'm hearing these things which in which he's flipped or integrated or pulled back, pulled into memory faculty the, the retention, which, which is similar to recollection, it's a retention of images of how I see myself 20, 10, 20, 30 years from now. And so I'm actually using the faculty of memory, which all animals use to make themselves as good as they can possibly be, that that very thing uh, that human beings have the greatest capacity for memory storage and he's calling upon the use of imagination and creativity to create images that we then store. And, and those, are, those are drawn from to create the perfect self, the hopeful self, the one we want to see. Finally, I'm finally the last. All the stuff we store, I guess we store mostly for some reason. But some of the things we don't even, we don't think about it. We just store it. And sometimes it just comes up. 
Sometimes that can be helpful, but if you are not careful, that can also harm you. Because most likely, if you store certain things that you are not fully of, in control of, you're, you're, you're going to create something not very nice. So this is just a little patch, and it's all about memory. And there's a few things he says about it, and a couple of incredibly kind of genius, clever things he says about it that match that match typical advice on self-improvement. People talk about visualization, and it's a very classic form of visualizing the future you want to see and getting there. And, but in this particular case, he starts off with an observation about animals and the function of memory in the, in the creation of their animal's excellence, and that's their capacity to survive. Then takes this whole visualization thing and ties it to that very faculty and that very function that all living creatures rely on to excel. If it's an animal, it's just surviving. But in our case, we can excel at anything. We could excel as a cellist. We could excel as a pole vaulter. We could excel as a pastor or a psych psychologist. We can excel in hundreds of ways or, or dozens of ways. We can excel as a brother or a sister or a mother or a father. So this, this envisioning, he's not just kind of drawing off of a motivational poster of visualize who you want to be 20 or 30 years from now. He's tying it to this very interesting and curious faculty in human beings in which we, have, we can almost remember what's not yet. It's something like that. Remember what's not yet because I'm creating an image and I'm storing it and so just as the same way a gamer will kind of draw up that exact three or point three of a second in which th this missile comes from that and that comes from that and, that and and only this move survives that's the same thing that allows us to instantaneously recreate what we need to get through challenges and difficulties he's he's defining that the, to envision our future, to think of ourselves, to think of what we want to be 5, 10, 20, 30 years from now, that it's actually drawing from that ubiquitous faculty of all living things and how memory serves our self-creation. And then, and then in this particular case, visualization or envisioning or deciding or, or picking that which we want to be is placing those images in storage and that, and that those are actually under our control. We have created them. And the final thing he says is that we're always storing things anyway and the ones that we're not attentive to, those are the ones that can come up and cause trouble, come up as our neuroses and as, our, as, as those kind of uh, negative sides, our greed, uh, uh, uncaring qualities, all that can be built out of negative memories, things stored without attention. So that's all I'm speaking about today, what I'm called building memories. It's the need for good memories and the search for them are have the option to actually be almost invented out of whole cloth. But if you're a spiritual person, if you're a prayerful person, it's certainly not out of whole cloth. It, those inventions might be something revealed to you from, uh, from on high, from the forces that have a deep intuition about your future and all that we can be. All right. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll be together again soon. Thank you.